This is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Welcome to another Silver Dollar episode of Stay Paid. My name is Joshua Steich. And I'm Luke Akery. And research shows that mindsets play a significant role in changing life's outcomes. This quote comes directly from a Stanford report published last year and further defines mindset as the assumptions and expectations you hold about yourself, your life, and the situations around you. Very interesting. Mm. The, the expectations, right? And the assumptions that you hold about yourself, your life, and the situations around you. So the question is, if this thing, this mindset that we all have within us controls so much of our personal life's outcome, how can we actually influence or even change our mindset to achieve what we want? And you just did a speak about this. Yeah on the insurance syndicate yep. recently. I have a new show in the insurance syndicate. Yeah. Um, so if you are an insurance agent, it doesn't matter what you sell, health, life, PNC, whatever, you can join this group, the insurance syndicate. It's like 5,000 plus when members. When talking about there. like, hey, what, what do we actually want you to talk about? They said, mindset. About mindset. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, it makes sense. We do a lot of TikToks on mindset. We do a lot of talks here on Stay Paid about mindset. You know, what's interesting, I shared this um, with them is, you know, we've built a pretty big company, yeah. 300 team members, and a lot of those are salespeople, 150, 160 salespeople. And it's been amazing over the years seeing the power of mindset because we spend a ton of time on process, yeah. how many dials you should make, um, you know, how what emails you send, what text messages, how long your phone calls should be, all these things that have to do with process. But we've never been able to put in processes that overcome human psychology. And yeah. that is a key note for people to take away of why mindset needs to be focused on, why it's so important, whether you run a team or even for yourself. There's no amount of process that you can put in that if you don't change human psychology and people's yeah. belief system, it doesn't matter how good the process is because they don't buy into it. They yep. don't believe it. And it starts with mindset. And when they asked me to speak on it, my first talk, I said, well, I want to talk about what, how I believe you actually influence your mindset. Because mindset is the big thing everybody talks about. Yeah. But where does it actually come from? Yeah. And I think, you know, there's probably neuroscience or I know there's neuroscience behind it. But I really think it comes from three things. It comes from your body, mind, and spirit. I think you're yeah. a three person and those three pillars of your life play into how you feel and how you think every single day. And I promise people that if you feel in a rut, if you feel unmotivated right now, or if you're looking to take your business to the next level, maybe you want to be that Tom Brady level performer in your career. It all starts with your body, mind, and spirit. And if something's off, one of those pillars is off in your life. Yeah, and I think that the most important part here is I was sort of thinking through this and reflecting back on my own personal experiences where I felt good about my mindset. Like even looking over this report and kind of looking at the definition and, and sort of how your mindset can influence outcomes, it feels sort of uh, amorphic. It feels sort of intangible. Like, well, how do you change your mind? You are who you are. You're, you think how you think, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you do it through action right? You actually have to take action and that will then so actually true. impact your mindset. If you sit around thinking, I want to think differently, you're already heading in with the defeatist attitude. So you true. actually have to take the action to impact and influence your body, mind, and spirit. And then your mindset follows. Yeah. You don't start with mindset. You start with some of these things I think you're going to yeah. talk about. That that's, will, that's why that it comes to the three to pillars. Mindset. Yeah. Correct. Because one of the most powerful things that was ever really taught to me was this idea of, you know, hey, what you put into your body, what you do with your body, what you put into your mind, who you hang around, what you do spiritually. Yeah, what you're reading, what you watch. It's, all it's that an intake, all right? Your yeah. you're, you're depositing yeah. in that bank account, yeah. right? And that bank account is what influences your mindset. If So if you think of every activity that you do as a deposit yep. into the bank account of mindset, it all, all of a sudden it correlates. And, and so my dad's a pastor, right? Everybody knows this. In, in, in scriptures, it talks about, you know, the mouth speaks from the heart, basically from what is in the heart, your mouth speaks. And it's kind of the same concept. It's like what you put into your mind, what you put into your body, all these things influence what you say. Because when you think about something all the time, you tend to speak about those things. You tend to act upon those things. So if I'm thinking about body and let's start with that first pillar, mm -hmm. here's my challenge to everybody. My challenge to everybody is, did you wake up today and do some form of physical activity? Mm -hmm. Did you wake up today and get to the gym? It doesn't have to be 
early, though I think early is better. But I think, did you get up and actually... It doesn't do have the, to be the gym. It can be a walk. It could be, yeah. It yeah. could be a walk. It could be something just to get some form of physical activity to fire those chemicals in get your body. dopamines going. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. That sets you up for success because when you feel like a million bucks, you act like a million bucks. Yeah. And people all the time, they get on phone calls and they're not closing deals. And I'm asking my, you know, I think to myself, well... You're not closing deals because you don't feel good. And if you don't feel good, you personify that onto people. You don't realize it might be subtle. Like yeah. it might not be a huge difference maker, but it's that difference in the top 1%. The top 1% people know this. Tom Brady's a perfect example. If you read his book, TB12, yeah. this is a high performer. And here's what you need to understand about high performers. They crave accountability and they yeah. crave measuring everything, right? They want to know how they're doing in every area. This guy measures his sleep his water intake, what he eats, coffee intake. He measures everything about his life. Why? Because he knows what I put into my body, what I do with my body will have a direct effect on my performance as an athlete. But not only that, it has a direct effect on your mindset. Well, we know that your performance comes from your confidence as well. And whenever you're feeling confident about yourself and you feel good and you don't feel sluggish because you ate what you knew you shouldn't have eaten or you sat mm -hmm. on the couch for too long or whatever, when you're up and moving, not only does it produce that chemical uh, um, balance or, or, or boost or whatever, but it also like you feel good about yourself. Yeah. When you feel good about yourself, you're naturally going to put that out. It's the same idea. So let's the, talk the about the actions, right? Because you said action is really what makes the difference that will lead to mindset. So if you think about, you know, getting to the gym, that's an action. Yep. Are you committed to that? And I say gym, but you make Do it a great in the point. morning, man. When, Any you, physical when you go activity. to the gym in the morning or you work out in the morning, it is infinitely Amen. more impactful on your mindset and your and your own confidence than if you go at the end of the day. Yeah. Infinitely. Get yourself an accountability partner. Yep. And this goes into our second pillar, which is the mind and, and who you're surrounding yourself with. But get yourself an accountability partner. It will do wonders for you. Here's a second action item for you. Your sleep. It is proven that sleep is one of the most critical things in all of your health. Are you looking at your phone 30 minutes before bedtime? <laughs> and I think it's probably like an hour, they say, put it down. I don't know the exact yeah, research, no right? screen time an hour before right. bed. But you think about this, and I don't know because I'm not a doctor or a nurse. It takes your brain a long like time that. to come down from that, that, um, that stimulation. All I want to try to do is inspire and convict people today to realize there's so many things they're not doing for their physical health that influences their mindset. Have you started doing that? Have you tried to do it? Give I am starting to try Have to you? put my I'd phone. Not to put you on the spot. Down. No, I'm no, I, that, it's, it's literally 100%. It's like the last I, thing I do of the day is check Twitter to see what's happening. And the happening other in the thing I'm then. trying to do is not look at it right in the morning. I literally sat on the couch today when I woke up for this 5 a.m. call and I was like, don't look at your phone. Yeah. Don't look at your phone. Yeah. Don't look at your phone. And it was amazing. The battle in my mind of just like, I just wanted to pick up TikTok or pick up Instagram. <laughs> but I'm just sharing this with you. Everybody's going to have a real. different conviction. Yeah. But it is the difference maker between the 1% and the 99% is the 1% don't look at their phone. What I'm meaning is, is to give the example or the correlation of like, they implement things like this in their life to make sure they protect their mindset. If you think about the body as well, another action item for you, what are you putting in literally physically food wise? Yeah. How are you eating in real estate agents? I, I hate to bust on you, but man, you're on the road all They're the time. The oh my gosh, you're probably eating so much fast food and yep. you know that is killing your energy level, which kills everything. So that's your first p pillar is your body. And that's enough for us to just take away and give action items for yeah. it and go change our whole life. The second takeaway is your mind. So you're a body, mind, and spirit. Your mind, this is controlling the majority of what you do. And you feed this every single day. I, I often say what you watch, you what you listen to. Yeah, you're not even you're not even intentionally saying, I'm going to put this in my brain. Yeah, and what's you're more powerful, the conscious yeah. or the subconscious mind? And a lot of people will say the subconscious mind yeah. is the most powerful one because you don't even realize what you're doing. And then you look back and go, I can't believe I did that, <laughs> right. right? It's like almost like you drive to work every single day and eventually you get to work and you realize, I didn't even remember driving. Don't remember there. the drive, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the subconscious mind. But you're feeding that mind. Think of it like the bank account. When you watch a TV show, you fed the bank account. When you listen to a podcast, you fed the bank account. When you're reading a book, you fed fed the bank account, who you hang around, your friends, the activity, you fed, fed the bank account. There's this lady I'm following now, Cody, I believe her last name is Sanchez, but she owes or owns like 29 businesses mm. and she's getting really popular on social media, has a lot of great content. She refuses to go out on weeknights. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's super interesting. And she refuses to go and drink. 
And I and she goes, and her take is, there's nothing wrong with drinking or going out, but she is in build mode and she's trying to build her businesses and be super successful. And she knows when she does that, she's feeding her mind. She's putting things in her body that are not going to put her at her ultimate performance level. And what she wants to achieve is bigger than the satisfaction she would get from going out that night or drinking. And I thought that was so powerful. So when yeah. you think about your mind, who are you surrounding with yourself with? What podcasts, what books, what TV shows are you listening to? You are going to be what you put in. And when you face adversity in your life, which we all do, you're going to go to that bank account and try to do a withdrawal. And if you reach in and you haven't invested in your personal development and you haven't fed yourself with things that uplift you, but you fed yourself with things that bring you down or even worse, things that make you fall into the trap of comparison. How often are you comparing your life to others that you see and you get envy and you get covetousness and you get all these things that bring you down, they don't lift you up. You're going to go and get a withdrawal from that. And so that's why it's so important. What are you reading? You know, one of the most powerful books that you can ever read or self-development books like How to Win Friends and Influence People, you know, Awakening the Giant from Within, because it deposits things in you that you can go back to and remind yourself of and go, yeah, 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 I remember this. And yeah. I remember what they said about facing this moment. And you have tools in your toolbox to now defeat that adversity. Yeah. And I mean, your if life. you're looking for like a practical application to your own business, when you're not consuming content or you're not consuming outside sources of information, you have difficulty creating content, right? Mm. Or creating that educational or that motivational that's that you want to put out there. Like I'm, I've even kind of thought about this recently from the perspective of I'm so in operation process. We're working on a big project internally. We've got a lot of different things going on. So I'm just so much in, all right, let's get this next thing done mode that I haven't been putting things in. And I thought about it yesterday because I'm like, man, we got to come up with topics for this podcast and you're empty. You're like, I've got nothing because I didn't put anything in. So that's one of the things like I remember even structuring like Miracle Morning is a great structure for this type of thing because it hits on all of the pieces. Yeah, it hits on point. the exercise. It hits on the reading. It hits on not looking at your phone mm -hmm. first thing in the morning. And I think it hits on this next piece, which is the spirit piece as well, because it talks about meditation and yep. vision boards and things like that. And I'll make the point too, before we go to spirit, that um, a big mistake that people don't think about it's not only who you're hanging around, but who you're listening to and why. Mm. Why are you listening to those people? And one of the most powerful pieces of advice I got from a mentor is don't listen to what people say, watch what they do. And if you think about this just from a pure marketing perspective, look at what a marketing company does to grow their own business. And that will teach you everything you need to know about their belief system in marketing. Mm -hmm. Because if you watch what people do, you'll be able to see and vet through. I mean, there's everybody in their mom is an influencer now. Everybody in their mom's putting out educational content. It's really hard to weave through the noise. So you want to be listening to people, but you also want to be vetting and checking who they are and why. Don't listen to people that don't have the life that you want right? Because you're going to get the life that they have from following the advice that they're giving, unless they're telling you, hey, don't do what I did, right? Because I ended up here. <laughs> but you want to find people who have the life that you want, right? And they, they have a life by design that you want, and you can then listen to their advice. But moving on to the spirit piece, this one is so powerful. Whether you're a person of faith or not a person of faith, what I tell people when it comes to the spirit side is you were meant for more than just feeding yourself. Meaning mm. we weren't created to be selfish beings in the sense of making your life all about you, making your life all about your money, making your life all about your accolades. Every single person you interact with, every person that comes to their end of their life, why is it that we're all in commonality at the end of our lives going, the money really didn't matter, the accolades really didn't matter? Because the, the reality of this life is you're a spiritual being and you have a higher purpose. So the challenge that I have for people is what is your higher purpose? I got the chance to go to Dave's funeral. So Dave was a past HR director yep. of ours and a really sad story, he passed away, young guy. And I was listening to people give testimony after testimony. Now, Dave was a person of faith. He was involved in his church. But give testimony after testimony of how this man, Dave, mm -hmm. influenced and changed their life. And it was a great reflection point for me of reminding myself of going, Luke, are you feeding your spirit? Is there something in your life, in your business that is bigger than yourself that you're giving back to that is a higher impact? Because here's why. When you're down in a rut, when you're unmotivated, when you can't get out of bed, when you don't want to make that phone call, sometimes that little spark you need is that you're not doing it for yourself. Mm. You're not just showing up for yourself to feed your own selfish ambitions. You're actually doing it for something bigger than yourself. And that's what allows you to do great things in this life. I love what Rick Warren said. He wrote the book, Purpose Driven Life. 
If you're looking for a great book, that's a great book. But he said, it's not about the duration of your life. It's about the donation of your life. Mm. So it's not about how long you live. It's about how much you donate, how much you give back. If you want a life of significance, it comes to a life of service. What I'm not saying here is that you shouldn't get out there and do great things and achieve accolades and make money and all those things. Those are great things. What I'm telling you is so much of your mindset comes from your ability to realize that, hey, the purpose of my life is not just to make myself wealthy, not just to make myself win another award. We've won many awards mm -hmm. over our years. I mean, it's kind of like, hey, eh, nice, <laughs> ni nice. That was, a, that was a fun dinner and a nice day, and you feel good about it, and I want to win more awards. Yeah. But it really is in the, in the giving back and causing impact and creating legacy that really makes the difference. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening. You can head on over to staypaidpodcast.com for the show notes of this episode as well as the video. And if you uh, like this episode and want to support the show, the, uh, we ask you to head on over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star review along with a comment. We'll read it here on the show. And the best way to show your support is to share this with a friend. Share this with someone that you think might need to hear this today. All right, today's dad joke. It's a doozy. Why is it inappropriate to make a dad joke if you're not a dad? It's inappropriate to make a dad joke if you're not a dad. It's a faux pas. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's a false <laughs> pas. Five out of ten. Guys, comment yeah. on the YouTube video if you want us to keep going with these dad jokes. Because so it's been 400 episodes. <laughs> it's been 400, and we're getting to the bottom of the barrel of dad jokes. And when Josh and I start uh, making them up, then you really know they're going to be bad. Oh, my gosh. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast.remindermedia.com. You can also find us on social media on Facebook and Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. And on TikTok, we are at Stay Paid underscore podcast. Make sure to subscribe for some more of that fire motivational content that there we, we just go. dropped today for this episode of stay paid i'm joshua Stike and i'm luke acree and guys here's what i would challenge you with you got to take extreme ownership of your situation in your life so there is some challenge that you need to overcome there is some level of performance that you're not reaching and you know it you're not hitting on all cylinders you're not the best version of what you possibly can be here's my challenge to you you need to take inventory of how you're feeding your body, mind, and spirit. Take inventory of that. That's the action item. How are you feeding your body? How are you feeding your mind? How are you feeding your spirit? Once you take inventory, you can actually develop a plan to cause change to get you to that next level. Remember, the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every business is top producers take action. Take action on that today.